Here's a team that's definitely just five good Pokemon and a Poliwrath. But I guess I can talk words good to you, as if I put even slightly more thought into that. Because I guess you're worth it. And if that's what you need to get hard, I'll try to make it happen. I've been wanting to use Belly Drum Poliwrath on a rain team for a while now, actually. Because it's 2018, and everyone on Twitter says they're Poly now. And you know what? I'm hip! God damn it! No matter what the teens say. Poliwrath is honestly way significantly better than I was expecting. It's still Poliwrath, you know, but it's not that bad. It's not that much worse than, like, Kabutops, I guess, which is, like, the closest equivalent physical rain dance setup sweeper. Obviously, you only get one chance to use Belly Drum, and, like, Poliwrath needs to use it in order to accomplish anything. But since Poliwrath has a way better typing than Kabutops, you, you definitely get chances to use it. You even get imaginary setup opportunities because I just like assumed the entire time using this team based on an unfounded belief in a fair and just universe that I would be able to set up on Ash Greninja. I actually ran the numbers after I got all these replays and you do not set up on Ash Greninja in the rain. But it doesn't really matter because I guess people just assumed I knew what I was doing since I always sent it out with such brash confidence that they switched out anyway. And I mean, like, you can send it out against fucking Tapu Coco, and people are probably gonna switch out anyway because of the fear. And if they don't, then just don't send that replay to the girl you have a crush on. Just send her the ones where you win, and also make sure that you tell her all of the OU speed tiers that you have memorized, and you'll get in those guts. Polyrath definitely gets setup opportunities. What Polyrath doesn't get are any moves or stats, or any kind of charisma at all. The surface level analysis is that it doesn't learn a fighting move better than Brick Break, but what a handsome and powerful Polyrath main such as myself will be quick to tell you is that since Polyrath notably has almost as much attack as Toga Demaru, even if it learned a real fighting move, you would still have to give it the same three moves I gave it anyway. The only thing you would want a fighting move for is Ferrothorn, but it's honestly way more efficient to just go about the standard rain team strategy against Ferrothorn, which is to hit it when it switches in with a water move, and then just do that 17 more times over the course of the game until you don't have to worry about it anymore. You kind of need Earthquake just to kill Toxapex in one hit, because if you don't kill it in one hit, you're just not killing it. Polyrath's second most important coverage move is uh, Return, because as it turns out, that's the only way that you're able to one-shot all three of Tapu Bulu, Tapu Fini, and Mantine after rocks. It doesn't actually kill good Tapu Finis even, but it kills the garbage one that's on the Smoggin analysis. But you're never getting this team above 1500 ELO anyway, so that's good enough. Is that all I have to say about Polyrath? I guess I should probably talk about the rest of this team now. That's the most words anyone's ever said about Polyrath. The most boring roundest little angry man that some Game Freak employee probably drew in crayon 12 seconds before his lunch break. Since it's a rain team, you have to have Pelipper. The only kind of interesting thing about it is that I gave it max special attack and hurricane, because killing grass types is really fucking hard. It's not max special attack, max speed, mind you. It's like max HP, max special attack. Those numbers could be optimized if anyone wants to think about them even a little bit, but... I'm not the kind of nerd that plays Pokemon to make numbers be good. I just play it because being better than a faceless 12-year-old at something is a really low-effort way to feel a sense of power in my life. I mean, I play it because I think the cartoon bears and shit are really cute. Greninja's here, so I have a rain abuser that actually gets more than one chance to accomplish anything. And also because as a complete frog, I was kind of hoping that it would just like trigger Polyrath's body dysmorphia and make it work a little bit harder to compensate for that. Mega Scizor is the pivot replacing the Ferrothorn that everyone uses on rain teams because I don't have Mega Swampert and I just like being able to click U-turn since it's an offensive team. And also because if I'm going to be looking at my character from behind all game I might as well be looking at a thick thorax am I right bro? High five me. Landorus is HO lead. Suicide, Focus Sash, Explosion, Imprison. Just because I... 
Because I think that's fun, okay? Why can't you ever just let me have fucking fun anymore? And then the Thunderous is Defiant Bulk Up, which is kind of a relic from when I thought that hazard stacking spikes with the Greninja was going to be way more critical to this team's success than it ended up being. But as it turns out, when you're using a rain team, you kind of just want to kill everything immediately and not just maybe kill them later if you get around to it. So I never actually used it to switch into that many defogs, but it's still pretty good because it's like, it's a good lore for bulky grass types. And it's also a, an almost creative band-aid for just getting 6 owed by Hawlucha otherwise. I could probably fix that problem more effectively by just actually using Mega Swampert so I don't just lose to the Tapu Coco half of Coco Lucha on its own, but fuck. Fuck it. I could also be doing something with my life at this point other than playing competitive Tamagotchi, but you and I both know that's not gonna happen either. Because it's not like I have to fucking impress you anyway, dad. Garchomp's downfall that I don't think I see people bring up enough is that he's got the little spikes on his legs. Because those don't seem super good for helping him defeat his foes on the battlefield, but way more importantly, it means that it'd be really hard for you to surreptitiously grip his thigh while you're enjoying a nice evening together. Hey guys, don't mind me. It's just me, Showdown Ladderbot. I haven't even looked at the top of the screen yet, but uh, this feels like a really good time for me to, to click the button that says Stealth Rock on it. I thought he was going to try to counter lead Pelipper with Tapu Koko, so that's why I led Landorus because I'm really good at team building, so that's my insurance against losing to every electric type, is just leading Landorus against it on exactly turn one. But this guy actually tried to snipe me with the Charizard instead, I guess, just to try to make sure that I only get like a little urine sample of rain before he immediately resets it with the drought. Or I guess maybe this guy was just honorably trying to let me know that it was Charizard Y on turn one because he doesn't rely on dirty tactics like deception and trickery to win his games. Earlier I switched into the man on Charizard Y's solar beam instead of just killing it with Pelipper straight up because I was hoping that he would go into Tapu Bulu and I could just kill that really early which would have been really useful here because I could have just clicked surf with Greninja and won the game, but I guess killing the Garchomp instead was good too, because tactically eliminating ground types also seems pretty useful for my rain team. I hard switched into the man on his Tapu Bulu, because I thought he would expect me to go into Scizor, and I knew that that wasn't Assault Vest from how much damage the Surf did, and I really didn't want him to like Swords Dance on the Switch and then All Out Pummel Me because I'd super need Scizor to be able to deal with the Tapu Koko. But what I wasn't expecting was for this guy to have almost as much ingenuity as that slime mold that learned how to navigate a maze just by growing through it. So he definitely just clicked Horn Leech there and then lets me switch Pelipper into his Charizard exactly the same way I did on like turn three, except this time I actually have the gumption to pull the trigger. And here we are, chums. It's finally time for Polyrath, America's sweetheart. Just gotta grab a quick setup opportunity off of the second best water fighting type that I'm looking at right now, and then heroically fail to calc how much a plus six waterfall does to Scarf Tapu Bulu in the rain. Spoiler alert, that would have killed it. But my hand was mysteriously occupied by my sudden massive erection that I had in that moment, which would have made typing all the numbers right in the calculator really difficult. This guy now has to choose his sacks in a way that he wouldn't if this was like a Mega Swampert or a Kabutops or something, which is pretty cool, and he basically has to choose between losing to Greninja or Mega Scizor, which actually he wouldn't have had to do if he just kept both the Tapu Bulu and the Keldeo alive, but that's fine, because that's just him succumbing to Polyrath's secret second ability other than Swift Swim, which is just that it makes your opponent play like absolute shit, because they don't want to lose to it. Man, this battle's got a lot of frogs per capita. 
Probably should have used Politoed instead of Pelipper to make my frog ratio even better. So this is really stupid. I was like, oh no, he can use Water Shuriken to break my Focus Sash. Better switch out so that doesn't happen. Because I guess I've got like a goddamn chimpanzee brain where I can't comprehend two people having two different sets of information and there was no reason for him to just assume I was Focus Sash. And not only is he Scarf Protean, but if he, if he was Ash Greninja, his little flaccid water shurikens probably wouldn't even have killed me. But it just gave me the opportunity to U-turn twice in a row into click Earthquake on his Heatran, like I'm fighting fucking Cool Trainer Bimmy on Route 17. And I can pretend like that was me baiting him into thinking I was going to U-turn a third time and not just him somehow failing to have a single ground immunity on his team. Or even a Tapu Bulu, even. Because, like, I think the structural integrity of your team is really undermined by only having half the Tapus. You might as well use three of them. I guess this guy would probably want a Tapu Coco, too, to maybe take this supersonic Sky Strike. Uh, that, uh, that probably still would have killed it. But, uh, throw it on there anyway. I, I think that four Tapus is a really good ratio for me to really devastate my foes on the ladder. I just leave Mouth in to die to this Ice Beam instead of going into Queen Mantis in U-Turning because I thought just killing Pelipper for the momentum and then bringing in Polyrath for free after that would let me just win the game by belly drumming, but uh, this Tapu Fini shuts me up real quick. That was still super crucial because killing the Tapu Fini is really important for me to be able to win the game with literally anything else. But I have to use more words to describe why Polyrath was important in this battle when I make my Smoggin post about why Polyrath deserves to be ranked in A- because I won one game with it one time. And I also have to make sure to say that it doesn't have four move slot syndrome because that's the buzzword. And it doesn't learn more than four good moves anyway. And that's what every guy with four posts and a Charizard avatar thinks four move slot syndrome means. <laughs> He'll never get me up here. So I just gotta push some quick damage on this Nido King just to make sure that I put it in KO range of my Greninja Surf. And now with my Fursona, I can be the best Dragon Ball Fighters player too. This is only a 50 50 if his Greninja has hidden power fire, but like. If he killed my Greninja with Moonblast, then I just go into Queen Mantis and U-turn, and it either kills the Greninja as he switches in, or it kills the Tapu Lele. And he can't kill me with Hidden Power Fire from the Tapu Lele, and he needs it on the Greninja to kill me. And I don't know why he would have that on both of them, but I guess this guy's also using some weird shit with a Nido King and no ground resistances, so I shouldn't... Try to talk cool about 50-50s as if I know what this guy's up to at all. His fucking Mega Scizor probably had Hidden Power Fire too. Certain eagle-eyed observers might notice that there's some kind of wretched little man between the Polyrath and Pelipper on my team. That's because I had an Amistar on here for all of about three battles before it dawned on me that PP Doodoo Amistar is a really bad Pokemon. I can say definitively that Polyrath is better than Amistar. So, the next time someone on Tinder gives you that icebreaker of whether you think Polyrath or Amistar is better in the OU metagame as it stands today, there you go. You know what to say. I decided to use this battle to develop a new strategy that I've been working on, which is called Clicking Landorus. If Landorus is the best Pokemon in the game, why wouldn't I just lead it every time? Because it's always going to have a good matchup. I love decision-making and long-term strategy. This guy decides to just, like, see how much tempo he can give me in the shortest amount of time, and then he's, like, so unreasonably terrified that I'm gonna HP ice his Landorus with my Landorus, because he dips out of there. So he's definitely, he's definitely still got his Lando T in the back to stymie the rest of my rain team, so that's gonna be pretty difficult to deal with. And then he, he just goes for it with Pinsir, even though he knew I didn't have Rocky Helmet and I don't have Leftovers or anything, so that could have easily been any Z-move to just, like, own the Pinsir. 
And I have a move that owns it anyway, but I guess it does kill my Landorus in the process. So this guy's probably like, nice, I've eliminated his physical wall. Now I can epically sweep him with Excadrill. And then my stepdad will finally give me the respect I deserve. I'm kind of forced to just keep clicking on my scissor button instead of making any progress in this game. Because why would I need a Volt Switch immunity after turn 4 if I've got Scizor, the Mantis who can switch into anything? Any one of these switches could have just been me sacking the Amistar, but I was like, Oh no, I can't let Amistar die, that's my win condition. Because I think win condition means theoretically getting one kill on a Tapu Fini before I just get forced out by the Tyranitar again. I was expecting to just switch Polyrath into a Stone Edge, which I knew would make me not be able to Belly Drum, because I'm pretty sure that's Choice Band from what it did to Queen Mantis. But I don't really need to Belly Drum to get any kills at this point anyway, I kind of just need to click Waterfall. But since this guy switched out, I can just like do it anyway, if for no other reason than the Fear, because the Fear is kind of... Polyrath's most important attribute, because it makes your opponent make flowers for Algernon plays like this, where he just intimidates me and sacks the Lando for no reason, because obviously a paltry plus five waterfall will never best my Magirna. Haha, <laughs> GG friend. I sure loved playing this video game with you. Oh shit! That, if that was Life or Brock Slide, that wouldn't have killed me, by the way. You know, I'm really glad that I made the executive decision to keep my Amistar safe like it was a consumable in an RPG. What if I really need it at the end of this battle? I kind of end up having to bet it all on black by getting big with the man before the man gets small. So that when he gets small, he doesn't get too small. But it ends up working out because it means that this happens instead of some other thing. That's it.